I've been a witness, a witness of love and kindness and drama and hatred. Over the past few weeks, I've been witnessing this every day, all from the same place, social media. Most of my peers have been registering onto websites where their followers can say something about them, anything, unidentified. I've seen a variety of responses, some nice, some not nice, and some just flat out ugly. After they read the responses, many of them post their feedback for everyone to see. But what makes us want to participate in these trends if we know we might get hurt? I think teens use these apps as much as they do because of the fact that it is anonymous. Many of the things people say online would not be said straight to someone's face, whether good or bad. But what's the point of saying something if you won't know who said it, even just a compliment? I personally would rather be given a compliment in person than through the internet. I feel like it means more. Someone had the courage to go up and tell you something than to a phone screen. Another thing I've noticed is viral trends. When one person posts a link to their anonymous account on Snapchat, at first a few will follow. Then eventually it's like everyone is asking everyone else to be completely honest about them, and that one link gets posted everywhere. Some teens will put the caption slide up, as in scroll to the link of their account. Others will put, be 100% honest, I don't care if it's mean or nice, as in what you say won't offend them. They expect people to think, oh, it's okay that I'm honest, they don't care. But either way, most people won't make their answer 100% true. You could lie and say something negative just to see their reaction, or you could say something positive to lift their spirits. That one nice comment could make someone's day. After observing all of this going on right at my fingertips, I had some questions. What I found was this. An anonymous messaging app created in Saudi Arabia started out as a way for adults to be honest with their bosses at work. It later expanded all around the world into the teens living in it. This same app was once number one in 30 countries and has had over 1 billion page views. It has climbed to the top of the charts and directed the eyes of countless teens to its page. So what have many of us been reading and writing that make the audience want to join in? Many of the comments I viewed have been positive, but many have been negative. The positive aspect of these apps mainly consists of appearances, facial and body images. While several have been pleasant and considerate, some have crossed the line of cruelty and disturbance, especially with young women. The people we know leave heartless responses for us girls to wake up to, shaming us about our bodies and who we surround ourselves with. Many you could even consider sexual harassment. The thing that most people don't realize is, it's not just a comment. It's not just a note that she won't read or think about. The truth is, this thought will stay in our heads for a while, and it won't go away. This isn't the only negative feedback teens will receive on these apps. Several pieces of feedback include telling teens that they don't matter, that they have no friends, or that they should kill themselves. I read a story about a 14-year-old girl that received comments such as, just do people a favor and commit, and cut yourself to death. And if you've even attempted to. After all the controversy these apps have been receiving, several have added features where you can block users and report comments. Although this keeps you from actually seeing the comment, it doesn't make it any better. Someone still made an opinion that shouldn't have been made, and you can't undo that. Although there are loads of reasons why this isn't okay, it makes me and many of the people witnessing this hate wonder why people feel the need to express their opinions in such an awful way. There are much better things to do than be a coward and criticize other people through social media. So instead of me dragging on about all the negativity these apps have to offer, I wanted to share how we can better them. Us teens already have enough to deal with like schoolwork, friends, and extracurriculars like sports. We don't need haters bringing us down when we really should be lifting each other up. You never know what someone's going through, so a friendly text or compliment can go a long way. But there will still be people that try to hurt and damage you from the safeness of their home. And if you are witnessing this happening to other teens, have a heart and see if they're okay. This hatred is the present of our social lives, and if we don't act fast, it will become our future too.